to earth and made his home with men. The hopeless found a home, the sinner found a friend, not to the powerful, but to the poor he service so hopefully we'll be um, a little bit shorter but like we usually say if um, little ones get restless um, or noisy um, we're not uh, worried about that we'll be relaxed. Uh, We're starting a new series uh, this morning and uh, we're going to be looking at the end of the book of 1 Kings which um, I don't know whether that's a part of um, the Bible that you've read before and um, uh, stories that you've looked at before but we're going to look at that uh, together and we meet don't we we meet as we meet every week in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But perhaps in light of uh, this uh, series from the end of 1 Kings, perhaps what we should say is we meet in the name of the real God. We meet in the name of the true God. We meet in the name of the God who is really God over all. And that's what we're going to find as we go through uh, these chapters at the end of 1 Kings. And the big lesson for us, I think, which I'm going to give you now, and we'll hear it through the service, if God is God, he's the true God, the real God, then we should listen to him, shouldn't we? And that is a big part of what we're going to do this morning. We're going to listen to the real God. Well, let me pray for us, and then we're going to stand and sing two songs as we begin, as we raise our voices in praise to the God who is the true God, the real God, the only God. So, should we stand, stand, I'll lead us in a prayer. And then we'll um, sing together. Our Father God, we praise you for who you are. We praise you that there is no God like you. We praise you that you are Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And as we hear your voice through the Bible today, we pray that we would, remembering who you are, that we would listen and we would be those who always listen to your voice. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
When I ate awesome wonder, consider all the works thy hand have done. I see the stars, I hear the mighty thunder, I have the run, the universe is mine. And sings my song. shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God how great thou art. Father God as we read a part of your word this morning where there seems to be a rival to you we pray that we'd be really convinced that you are the only God the real God the true God we ask in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Please do take a seat. As we come to a time in our service where we're going to tell God what he already knows, we're going to say sorry to God for the way that we don't treat him as God. I'm just going to read a couple of verses from Exodus 20. These are probably familiar. This is the very start of the Ten Commandments. And God says this, you shall have no other gods before me. No other gods. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or the earth beneath or the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. That's pretty clear, isn't it? God is God. Don't worship 
anything else, anyone else, you shall not bow down to them or worship them. So we're going to take a few moments to say sorry uh, to God uh, for the way that we don't listen to his word, the way we don't live with him as God as we should. Chloe, would you click on for us on the next one? There we go. Should we say these words together? Do join in if you feel happy to uh, say them, and we'll uh, join in all the words together. So let's uh, confess our sins together. Lord God, we break your law. We don't worship you alone. We make gods of other things. Father, in your mercy, please forgive us. Lord God, we ignore your word and live how we want instead of listening to you. Father, in your mercy, please forgive us. Lord God, we forget you and we forget that you rule over all things. Father, in your mercy, please forgive us. In those same verses in Exodus chapter 20, we read that God is not only the real God, the true God, the only God, but he is also the compassionate God, gracious and merciful. Isn't that good news? He's a God who knows that we don't treat him as God and yet has made a way through Jesus to forgive us. So let me lead us in a prayer. May Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And God of constant mercy, who sent your Son, Jesus, to save us, please remind us this morning of your goodness. Increase your grace within us, that our thankfulness may grow. And we ask it through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, well, this morning, as we uh, think about um, these um, verses at the end of 1 Kings, thanks, Henry, um, I thought I'd just get us a little bit thinking about listening to God's words. And so we're going to play um, a little game of the word of dot, 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 question mark. Okay, so I'm going to put up a little um, quote, a few words uh, from somebody that hopefully some of us will know who they're from, uh, and you have to tell me. Uh, who said it? Whose are these the words of? Okay, um, so here we go. These are the first words. To infinity, we've got some hands already. To infinity and beyond. Okay, you kind of feel like you have to kind of um, shout your arm, shoot your arm up in the air, don't you? And um, to infinity and beyond. Okay, so let's have as many hands as we can. Who thinks they know? I've got one at the back. I've got some grown-ups who think they know as well. Um, that's good. Some fans of um, Toy Story. I'm going to go here because Jed, I think your hand was the first hand. Buzz Lightyear. You think Buzz Lightyear said to infinity and beyond. There he is. Fantastic. Okay, so you get the, game, you get the idea of how, uh, how it works. Um, here's the next one. Let it, I won't sing it for you, but let it go. <laughs> um, let it go. Here we go. How many have we got? Um, oh, yeah, look at that. We've got about the same hands going up. Okay, let's go Katie. Elsa. You think it was Princess Elsa from Frozen. There we go. Is that, did I get the right picture? Is that Elsa? There we go. Brilliant. Um, fantastic. Very good. Okay, this one uh, was a bit more of a... Um, uh, um, <laughs> there we go. I was wondering whether I might get that response. Okay, I am Groot. Who might have said? I, oh, there's more hands than I was thinking. Okay, look at that. Um, Isaac. Groot. Groot. I was always going to be Groot, wasn't it? But Groot said, I am Groot. Um, from Guardians of the Galaxy, which we might have had a little bit last week. I was trying to keep a bit of continuity. There we go. We've got a picture. There you go. For those of you who don't know who Groot is, there you go. I had no idea who Groot is, but um, there we go. Okay, slightly more sophisticated, just to make sure we're all in play. To be or not to be? Okay, to be or not to be for the book, Boffins. There we go. Rosie's hand. I knew Rosie's hand would go up. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I'm going to go Joel. Oh, okay, Hamlet. He redeemed, redeemed himself just in time. You in agreement? Okay. I didn't quite know which picture to choose. That's slightly controversial, isn't it? Oh, you've seen him. There we go. There we go. Was he a good Hamlet? I googled the best actors to play Hamlet, and he was one of them, so... There you go. Um, that's what Google says. Yabba dabba do. There we go. Oh, look at that. We've got, we've got Richard's got his hand up. Oh, and Karen as well. Brilliant. Good. Okay. Jacob, do you think you know who said... What was that? Shout it out loud. Did you? Fred, did you say Fred Flintstone? Amazing. Amazing. Fred Flintstone. There we go. I thought that might be a slightly older cartoon. Brilliant. Yabba dabba do uh, was uh, Fred Flintstone. 
Of course, who said those different things, yabba dabba do, uh, or to be, um, or not to be, uh, and those different quotes, um, doesn't really matter if we know who said them, does it? And it uh, doesn't really matter if we listen to them. But it does matter, it does matter more than anything in the world that we listen to the voice, the words of the God who is the real God, the true God, and the only God. And like I said, that's what we're going to see uh, in the last few chapters of the book of 1 Kings. So before we have our reading, we're actually going to learn a new song, which is all about um, the Word of God, which um, some of us um, might know. And what we're going to do this morning as we learn it is we're going to learn it by singing along with a video on the screen, which has just got the words on. Um, but the good thing about that is um, there are some actions that go with it. So I thought we could learn the actions um, to help us think about the Word of God, and uh, then we can stand up and have a go at doing them. Okay, so here we go. The good thing about this song um, is the actions in the verses are very tame, and there's only one, about one per line. Okay, so here we go. Let's, uh, let's see. Okay, so hold, you're going to do this with me. Okay, so hold the power. Do you want to do the clicking for me? Hold the power of the universe in your hand. Hold the words, the same action again. Hold the words that shaped, and then we're going to do a big circle, the sky, the sea, and land, okay? And then a crown, because the king has given words to us to tell us what he's like. Big ears, open up your ears, and let his spirit strike. I said it was fairly straightforward, wasn't it? Okay, so we've got um, holding, we've got the word, we've got our ears, and we've got the king. Um, okay, but um, it's, worth, um, uh, it's worth pacing yourself in the verses because the chorus gets quite um, quick uh, with the actions, okay? So it goes like this. I've got the chorus up. Um, it's a light, and I have, I've got the pictures down here. That's why I'm using my piece of paper, okay? Um, so it's a light and a hammer, Okay, and these are going to come pretty quick. So it's a light and a hammer. Um, it's a fire. I quite like that one. You've got to kind of make a fire with your fingers. It's a fire and a sword. And all these are descriptions of God's word in the Bible. So it's a light and a hammer. It's a fire and a sword. It's the voice of the Father, the word of the Lord. And then I really like this one. It's the blade of the Spirit. You've got to be slightly careful who's standing next to you, close to you, okay? So it's the blade of the Spirit, double action like that. The blade of the Spirit that can cut to the soul, and God will use it to make us whole. Okay, that's the chorus. And then there are two more verses uh, which are really simple. Hear the news of the promised king who came to save. Hear the news of Jesus who rose up from the grave. Our king has come to live on earth and rescue us from sin. Open up your mind and let his spirit in. And then verse 3 should be there. Know the name, that's the same action, Okay, know the name of Jesus Christ that makes us new. Same action again. Know the Son of God, the Word whose Word is true. Our King has spoken to us, so there is no place for pride. No place for pride. He gives hearts of flesh and changes us inside. And then we're back to the light and the hammer and the, all of those bits, the fire and the sword. Okay, brilliant. Um, so, I'm going to press play. Should we stand up, and we'll give it a go, and we're going to sing along uh, to the music, and I will try and do the actions out here, out front. Let's see if we can. Open up your mind and let it 
a light and a hammer, it's a fire and a sword It's the voice of a father, the word of the Lord The blade of the spirit can cut to the soul And God will use it to make us whole Christ that makes us new. Know the Son of God, the Word whose Word is true. Our King has spoken to us, so there is no place for pride. He gives hearts of flesh and changes us inside. It's a light and a hammer, it's a fire and a sword It's the voice of the Father, the word of the Lord The blade of the Spirit can cut to the soul And God will use it It's a light and a hammer, it's a fire and a sword It's the voice of the Father, the word of the Lord The blade of the Spirit can cut to the soul And God will use it to make us whole The reading is taken from the first book of Kings, starting at chapter 16, verse 29, on page 343 in the Church Bibles. In the 38th year of Asa, king of Judah, Ahab, son of Omri, became king of Israel, and he reigned in Samaria over Israel 22 years. Ahab, son of Omri, did more evil in the eyes of the Lord than any of those before him. He not only considered it trivial to commit the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, but he also married Jezebel, daughter of Ethbaal, king of the Sidonians, and began to serve Baal and worship him. He set up an altar for Baal in the temple of Baal that he built in Samaria. Ahab also made an Asherah pole and did more to arouse the anger of the Lord, the God of Israel, than did all of the kings of Israel before him. In Ahab's time, Hiel of Bethel rebuilt Jericho. He laid its foundations at the cost of his firstborn son, Abiram, and he set up its gates at the cost of his youngest son, Sechob, in a cause with the word of the Lord spoken by Joshua son of Nun. Now Elijah the Tishbite from Tishbe in Gilead said to Ahab, as the Lord the God of Israel lives whom I serve, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years except at my word. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Richard, thank you very much for reading for us. Now, we'll do keep um, those verses open. And uh, those uh, verses that we just had read, the very end of chapter 16, and we just had chapter 17, uh, verse 1, um, they set up for us a bit of a contest. Now, the um, um, alert of you this morning might have noticed um, there's not a problem, there's not a leak at the front of church, um, but we actually have a boxing ring uh, set up at the front of church. And uh, just like you might have in a real boxing ring, um, we have got the blue corner over here, okay? Um, if there are any church disputes, we can also settle those later on. And um, over here, um, for this morning, I want you to humor me, and um, we're going to say that this um, pinkish color is the red corner, okay? We're going to go with that. So we've got the blue corner, and we've got um, the red corner over here, okay? And um, these verses are setting up a contest, if you like. And uh, we're not going to see all of the contest today. We're not going to really have the fight today. But we find out who are the main 
uh, contenders, who are the uh, two um, opposition. And um, uh, you can probably guess uh, who they're going to be, but we're going to see it from uh, the passage. The first person we actually meet in our passage is uh, a new king. There's a new king on the scene. Now, I need somebody to come and be uh, a king for me. Katie, are you happy to come and be a king? That'd be fantastic. That means you get to go in the blue corner. Do you want to, do you want to go into here, into the boxing ring? Look at that. And uh, do you think you could sit up on this stool? There we go. And you get to wear the crown. And if you want to, um, you get to... Look at that. Why don't you spin around so we can all see you? Look at that. So here's Katie in the blue corner. Um, Katie is representing King Ahab in our story. Okay? So do you want to have the blue gloves as well? You can have a go getting those on. Okay, brilliant. There's a king, and we are told a little bit about where he's king, but we're mostly told uh, what kind of king he is. And the big headline really is that things under King Ahab in the northern part of the kingdom They go from bad to worse. Okay, they go from bad to worse. And you can see that all the way through our passage. In fact, just before our passage, Ahab's dad was called Omri. And Omri was the worst king ever. And then we read in verse 25 of our passage that Ahab was even worse than Omri. Ahab, son of Omri, did more evil in the eyes of the Lord than any of those before him. So things are going from bad to worse. He's a really bad king. And this uh, new king, where things are going from bad to worse, one of the main ways that things go from bad to worse is that the worship in the kingdom under King Ahab goes from the worship of bulls to the worship of Baal. The worship of bulls to the worship of Baal. Where's some... We did have a... Oh, there we go. Here we go. I've got a... um, I've got a little bull here. Uh, One of the other people named in our passage was known for setting up uh, an altar to worship some golden calves, some golden bulls. And uh, I guess if you've ever been chased by a bull, if you've ever been in a a field with a bull or near a bull, they're pretty scary, aren't they? Um, They're probably to be feared. And I suppose if you're going to worship something, at least worship something that's strong and and powerful and, and real. And, well, a bull maybe is, is a contender for that. I know this one's not particularly scary. But, um, but you know what? Ahab thought, I can do better than that. And so the worship in Israel moves on from bulls to Baal. Now, at this point, I need some more help. Um, Isaac and Jacob, I've just caught your senior sitting there. Could you, could you help me? I'm going to give you about two minutes to build the tallest tower you can with these Duplo blocks. Do you think you can do that? Is that the kind of thing that you can, um, you can do? And then when you've done it, if you build it on there, perhaps, bring it, bring it down to the front to me in, in a couple of minutes. If, um, if you've got the Bible open, the, the Bible writer wants us to spot Baal all over the place. Okay? Have a little look in the passage. Have a look at uh, verse 31. Because Ahab gets married, and uh, Ahab's father-in-law is called... Do you spot his name? Uh, I just can't find it. Ethbaal, there we go, verse 31, Ethbaal. Okay, so the new father-in-law is somehow connected to uh, this false god, this idol called Baal. And then it just keeps on going, doesn't it? As we learn about Ahab and, and what he worships. So his father-in-law is called Ethbaal. Um, Ahab began to serve Baal, verse 31, and worship Baal, verse 31. Verse 32, he set up an altar for Baal in the temple of Baal. Do you get the idea that there's a new king, and under King Ahab, worshipping Baal is what everyone was doing. And although that was new, although that was a new thing, actually, what's going on under King Ahab is just the same old problem there's been in Israel for years and years and years. The same old problem, actually, really, is that they keep on saying no to God's word. We read Exodus 20, didn't we? Exodus 20 is really clear. You are not to make any false gods. You're not to bow down to them. Don't bow down to a bull. Don't bow down to a Baal. Don't bow down to anything at all. How how are we going with the tower? Oh, look at that. That's fantastic. Look at this tower. Do um, Do you want to really carefully bring it down for us? No pressure. I think we need a sort of low level... Ooh, as they as they bring oh no no oh, no 
bring, bring down what you've got, it's fine. It all helps the illustration. I said that um, with the worshipping the bull, I mean, at least the bull is real, and the bull is quite scary and to be feared, isn't it? The thing about Baal, the thing about worshipping Baal is, well, Baal is just made up. So we've given these guys, let's give them a round of applause. Look at this. We, um, let's, um, let's get a little table here. Can we pop him on there? Fan. Ooh. Brilliant, brilliant. We're just going to reconstruct this false god here. This is helping the illustration because, because can you see how foolish this is? If you, were, if you were going to bow down to a god and you had to sort of help your god um, by sticking him together <laughs> and by repairing him when he falls over. Do you, do, you, do you guys think this would be... Yeah, look at this. Brilliant. Feet of clay. Okay, I think, I think what we'll do is we'll leave it there. Okay, and um, we'll say a big thank you to you. Thank you so much. Let's give them another little clap. And um, do you guys want to go and have a seat? Thank you so much. You can come and finish it afterwards. Brilliant. Well done. Thanks, Jacob. Woo! Brilliant. There we go. Fantastic. Worshipping, worshipping Baal, uh, worshipping a bull might make a little sense. Worshipping Baal doesn't make any sense. And so actually, even though we've got King Ahab over here, oh, thanks, guys. Brilliant. I'll just pop that down there. Great. You can go and have a sit down. Brilliant. Even though we've got King Ahab over here in the blue corner, actually, we've got Baal over here. Baal, the false god. Baal that's been made by somebody, made up by somebody. And um, we can give Ahab a sign just so we get a feel for it. Here we go. Here's Ahab in the blue corner. That's going to be really hard to hold, isn't it? With your, if I stick that in there like that. Can you hold that sign? <laughs> you have to hold it between your hands. Maybe take one glove off and hold it. We didn't try all this beforehand, did we? No. My God is Baal. Can you see that? Before a boxing match, you often get the people kind of parading around um, the boxing ring, don't you? Well, here we go. In the blue corner, Ahab's God is Baal, and Baal is everywhere. Worship of Baal is everywhere in Israel. And as they do that, they're saying no to God and no to God's word, which clearly says don't have any other gods. And there's a little verse, if you're wondering what's going on in verse 34, where we suddenly get this story about a rebuilding project in Jericho and two boys who die. Basically, that's a little example for us, that during Ahab's kingdom, they really didn't care about God's word because God had said through Joshua, don't rebuild Jericho. Don't rebuild it because it will be really costly. And it will cost you some of your children if you do it, because it is uh, cursed. But they do it anyway. They don't care what God says, and they do it anyway. So we've got the blue corner, and we've got Ahab, and we've got Baal, the false god. Uh, now we meet, in our passage, a new prophet. And the prophet's going to go in the other corner. Jed, do you want to come and be um, the prophet for us? Okay, here we go. Come and sit on this stool. Um, so you might have to put that tea towel. You might have thought the tea towel was for the boxing ring to wipe away the blood and sweat, but actually it's to make you look like a prophet, like that. Okay, very good. So you are Elijah, okay? Elijah, you can have the pink gloves. And Elijah has got a really important job because Elijah, being a prophet, uh, has got a message, a message to King Ahab from God. You've dropped a glove. Okay, I will come in the ring. Just go easy on me. Here we go. There we go. There's the pink glove. Brilliant. So we've now got our red corner as well. We've got a new prophet. And the thing I love about Elijah is Elijah finishes off for us uh, this contest. Tells us who the contest is really between. So we've got Ahab who says, my God is Baal. But Elijah, do you know what Elijah's name means? Elijah's name means, my God is Yahweh. Yahweh is the Bible name for God. Okay, for the true God, the real God, the God of the Bible. And Elijah's name, before he even says a message, Elijah's name tells us. Now then, I've got the same problem here, haven't we? My God is Yahweh, it says over here in the red corner. We'll prop it up over here for you, Elijah, so you don't have to hold it. Okay? So we've got our two corners, the blue corner and uh, the red corner. 
Um, now, I think um, our messenger might need a little bit of help. Uh, ben, do you have to come and open this envelope for us? Because with those gloves on, Elijah's going to really struggle to deliver his message. Can you open it out and see what this message says? Brilliant. Can you, can you read that side for us? No rain, brilliant, thank you, for three years. That's fantastic, great, do you want to come and have a sit down? No rain for three years. That is uh, the message that comes from God's prophet, Elijah. No rain. Uh, we went on holiday to Wales, and the day before we went on holiday, um, the person who owned um, the property sent us an email to say, it is the driest summer for years and years and years. There's been no rain, and this cottage doesn't have mains water, it has a spring, and the spring is drying up. So you're going to have to drink water from a bottle, you're going to have to have showers rather than baths, so I wouldn't get too close, and uh, flush the toilet when necessary, but we'll move over that one pretty quickly. Thankfully, there was some rain later on in the week. But imagine there was no rain for three years. You can forget about your brolly. I've seen some people have brought it this morning, because rain's due. You wouldn't need your brolly, you wouldn't need your coat or your wellies. Uh, there'd be no water fights, no pool parties. And no rain for three years would be a massive challenge to the farmers, wouldn't it? It's already in our country a massive challenge because it's been so dry this summer. But actually, no rain for three years is a much bigger challenge for Baal even than for the farmers because Baal is meant to be the god of life and fertility and, and rain and crops and harvest and all those sorts of things. So if there's going to be no rain for three years... Baal is going to look, well, he's going to look really silly. He's going to look really, really silly. He's going to look as silly as a Duplo model that needs putting together by children. You see, by giving the message, no rain for three years, God is actually saying, I'm God and Baal is not God. There you go. The real God says, no rain for three years. The real God says, I am God. Baal is not God. The real God is saying, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to my word. I told you not to make up your own gods. They're not real. Listen to me and don't worship those things that you've chosen for yourself to worship, things that you've made for yourself to worship. Don't worship them. Worship me. The real God is saying, listen to me and worship me. And you know what, in the end, I know we've got our boxing ring here, and we've got our blue corner and our red corner, and we've got our boxing gloves. Actually, as we go through these chapters, we're going to see there's, there's not really any contest. It's not really any contest, because God is the real God. And God has all the power. Um, Jesus says, doesn't he, later in, um, later in the Bible, Jesus um, says this, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words, he says, will never pass away. As we start this new little series looking at One Kings, as we start a new term, perhaps as we get back into habits of, of going to school or going back to whatever we've sort of stopped and pressed pause on for the summer, uh, what a great opportunity for us to get serious again about listening to this God. That's the challenge of this passage, I think, isn't it? It's going to be the challenge of this whole section. How are you responding to the real God, the only God, and to what he says. Are you listening to what he says? Are you doing what he says? Whose voice is God in your life? And God says, don't listen to anybody else. Certainly don't have anybody else as more important than me. I am God. Listen to me. Worship me. I think there's also a little encouragement for us, just as we finish in this passage, because things got really wicked in Ahab's day, and you might look around the world and you might flick on the TV and you might see the news and you think, the world is in a real mess. And I love it how in this story, Elijah just seems to come from nowhere. Because God is not surprised when the world is in a mess. God is not surprised when people don't listen to him. God doesn't get surprised by how bad things seem to be. And God isn't surprised when people worship other things instead of him. Because God is still God He's still powerful, and his word is still true. And so the question still remains, doesn't it? Same question. Are we listening? Are we listening to that word, to the powerful word of the true, real, only God? 
And that was um, picked up for us in that song. So I'm going to pray. And I think we might have a little go at singing that song uh, again, just to remind us. So let's um, pray together. Father God, we thank you for this story. We thank you for Elijah, who came not just bringing a message, but being a message. Uh, His very name reminding us that you are God, the real God, the only God, the true God. And we pray, Father God, that as a church, as individuals, we would have you as God in our lives, and we would listen to your words, that we would make space for Jesus' words, the words of the true God, in our lives, day by day. And we ask for your help in this, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Do you want to go and have a sit down, Elijah and Ahab? What a brilliant job. Fantastic. Tea towel, gloves. Brilliant. Well done. Thank you very much. Great. Um, Let's stand, and uh, we're going to have a go at playing it. We're going to have a little go at playing Let's pray together. Dear God, we thank you so much that you are real and you are powerful. We thank you that we have this opportunity to be together and to hear from you. Thank you that you speak to us, work in and through us, grow us and change us. 
please help us to love and support each other throughout the week as we all seek to love and serve you. Amen. Dear God, thank you for all the leaders who teach us and help us in our Sunday groups. We are really excited to for them to start back. Please help the fun day go well and please help to have fun. Amen. Dear God, Dear God, please help children who are starting school or in your school, starting a new class or a nursery. Please help people who are leaving school and we pray for teachers who will have new students to teach. Please help children to learn th new things and to make new friends. We pray for the McQueens back in Senegal that they f feel settled in and they get back to their routine. Amen. As we think of the church worldwide today, God, we give you thanks for those that serve us in any and every capacity. We're sorry that we don't always love and support each other as we should or could. Revive us, make us strong, inspire us with comforting and encouraging words and prayers that bring you joy, grow your kingdom, and glorify your name throughout the world. Dear God, Please help all the people and families struggling at the moment with the increasing cost of living. Please help them make wise financial decisions and help them to know your love and support through these tough times. Please guide them to places they can find support in their communities. We pray too for our government's role in these difficult times. Please give them compassionate hearts and wise decision-making skills. For the new Prime Minister, we pray for good advisors surrounding them and for a great show of support for all the people they serve. Amen. Dear God, we don't like it when we're poorly and it makes us feel sad. We don't like it when others are poorly too. Sometimes they feel sad and sometimes they feel lonely. Please help people who are poorly get better. Please help them to know you love them and that we love them and that they are never really alone with you. Amen. And we'll just close together by saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. A few notices for us, and these were up on the um, uh, screen as you came in, so hopefully you know uh, what's going on. Um, but just before we come to those, I'm going to publish um, some bands of marriage. <laughs> um, just realize I'm standing uh, behind um, our Lego ball. There we go. Um, so I'm going to publish the bands of marriage uh, between Jack Philip Hodson, who is single and of this parish, and Faye Joanne Braham, also single and also of this parish. This is the first time of asking. So if any of you know any reason why, in law, why these persons may not marry each other, you are to declare it now. And I'm hoping that um, Jack and Faye will uh, visit us uh, one of these uh, next Sunday mornings, so we'll pray for them um, one week when they're here, which will be lovely. Um, uh, most of us will know, I'm sure, that Aaron and Lydia um, are moving away really soon, uh, which we're very sad that you're going, but excited what you're going to. Um, Aaron's going to be um, training, um, thinking about um, serving, um, serving the gospel, serving Jesus uh, in some way in future years. Um, so we're going to be saying goodbye to them. Not quite yet. It's a couple of weeks, isn't it? But um, this afternoon from three to six, um, they are inviting any of us to come to their home for an open house, tea and cake uh, between three and six, 27 Stubbs Lane. Is that right? Um, brilliant. 
Um, so um, do grab them afterwards if, you, um, if you'd like to go, um, but they'd love to, love to see us. I'll make sure in the next uh, week or so. The 14th is the current planned moving day, isn't it? So we've got you for at least um, another Sunday. Um, but do make sure you um, uh, say goodbye, get their details, all those sorts of things before, uh, before they go. Um, and actually, it's our prayer meeting on Wednesday, which is the next notice, and we're going to make sure that we pray um, for Aaron and Lydia. Um, so if you don't know what they're doing, uh, and you'd like to know, and you'd like to pray for them as they uh, head to new things, make sure you come on Wednesday. And uh, we usually meet at 8 o'clock for our prayer meeting, 8 or 9. And we're going to say, come a little bit early, um, come to the vicarage, and we'll, we'll have pudding together, and then we'll pray as usual from 8 till 9. So if you're able to join us, uh, it'd be lovely to see you for that. So that's this Wednesday uh, evening from 7.30 at the Vicarage. Um, the Mother's Union, I think, is meeting on Thursday, Jean. Is that right? 1.30, Coronation Room. So that's, um, that's this week. Um, uh, do go along to that if you're part of that. Um, and I've put at the back um, a sign-up sheet. So we've got a couple of things coming up. On Saturday, the 17th of September, uh, we're opening St. Stephen's as part of the Wirral Hope, uh, Heritage Open Days. And um, if you can help us by welcoming people or serving drinks, um, that'd be fantastic. They will be, um, besides the, the display we've already got, uh, we'll have uh, some more displays about local history, um, particularly um, Prenton at War, some of the details of um, houses that got bombed and things like that in the local area. Um, Charlie's going to play for us as well in the afternoon, and um, Ian is going to give some um, presentations on those history, um, uh, history uh, of the local area that we're putting together. Um, so um, uh, hopefully those will be interesting things for the people that come. And uh, if you can help by making that possible, do let us know. That'd be great. And then the following Saturday, it's busy, isn't it? The following Saturday is the fun day. And uh, again, we'll need lots of help for that. Um, so if you can, uh, please do let us know. Uh, so we've been thinking about how bad it was under King Ahab. And uh, things were pretty bad because they'd shoved God out the picture and they said no to his word. Um, but we have been reminded, haven't we, that God is the true God, the real God. And if he is for us, well, who can be against us? So we're going to stand and sing a final song together. God is for us. Let's stand together. for us the fun. 
Father's love is a strong and mighty fortress. Raise your voice now. No love is greater. Who can stand against us if our God is for us? Well, here's the start of Elijah's message. As the Lord, the God of Israel lives, whom I serve. Or may we each go this week to serve the true, the only, the living God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Please do take a seat and uh, stay for refreshments afterwards. <laughs> 